Welcome back. In this video, we will continue to practice using row reduction to solve linear systems. We begin with a definition. We say that matrices A and B are row equivalent if one can be obtained from the other using a sequence of elementary row operations. We write A tilde B, but we say A is row equivalent to B. There's an important theorem, which we'll prove in chapter four, that says that the reduced row echelon form of a matrix is unique. We can therefore write RREF of A to denote the reduced row echelon form of the matrix A. So if A is row equivalent to B, then that means that A and B must have the same reduced row echelon forms. Let's look at an example. Solve the linear system 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 8, 2x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 is equal to 5, and x1 minus x2 minus 2x3 is equal to minus 5. So here we have a linear system of three equations, each in three variables. I'm going to ask us to solve this in two different ways. First, we're going to use row reduction to get to row echelon form, and then use back substitution. We can also solve this by reducing all the way to row reduced row echelon form, and then we'll see the solution straight away. Let's get started. The augmented matrix of the linear system is 0, 2, 1, 8, 2, 3, 1, 5, and 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 5. As we've seen previously, the first thing that we want to do is put a 1 in that highlighted green space. I can do this using a row swap. In particular, I can swap row 1 with row 3, giving me the matrix 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 5, 2, 3, 1, 5, and 0, 2, 1, 8. Now that I have a leading one in this top position, I'm going to use that one to put a 0 where the 2 is. I'll use the row operation, row 2 minus 2, row 1, becomes the new row 2. Row 1 stays the same, and in row 2, I do 2 minus 2, which is 0, 3 minus minus 2, which is 5, 1 minus minus 2, which is also 5, and finally, 5 minus minus 10, which is 15. The third row stays the same. At this stage, I'd like to have a 1 in this position here. I can do a scalar operation. In particular, I can do 1 fifth of row 2 becomes the new row 2, giving me the matrix 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 5, 0, 1, 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 8. Now, I can use this one to get rid of the 2 using the row operation. Row 3 minus twice row 2 becomes the new row 3, giving me the matrix 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 5, 0, 1, 1, 3, and 0, 0, minus 1, and 8 minus 6 is 2. Finally, 
So this matrix at this stage is in row echelon form. Let's check. All rows of zeros are at the bottom because there are no rows of zeros. The leading entries are 1, 1, and minus 1. They have the correct configuration. So at this point, I'll start with row 3. And I'll check what it tells me. Row 3 says that minus x3 is equal to 2, which tells me that x3 is equal to minus 2. Now I'll go to row 2. This row tells me that x2 plus x3 has to equal 3. This is why this method is called back substitution. Because remember, I know now that x3 is equal to minus 2. So I can replace this x3 by minus 2, leaving me with x2 minus 2 is equal to 3, telling me that x2 must equal to 5. Finally, I can go to row 1, where the coefficients tell me that x1 minus x2 minus 2x3 is equal to minus 5. And this time, I'll sub in both x3 is equal to minus 2 and x2 is equal to 5, giving me x1 minus 5 plus 4 is equal to minus 5. In other words, x1 is equal to minus 4. So I've solved the linear system as x1 is equal to minus 4, x2 is equal to 5, and x3 is equal to minus 2. For part B, we want to continue the reduction process all the way to reduced row echelon form. We don't need to redo all our steps, so I'll copy the last version of the matrix that we had before we solved. Remember, one of the features of reduced row echelon form is that I want all the leading entries to be ones. I can see that the third leading entry is not a one, but I can make it a one by just scaling the third row. This leaves me with one, minus one, minus two, minus five, zero, one, one, three, and zero, zero, one, minus two. This is the part of the algorithm where now we've identified each of the leading entries. We've made sure that we have zeros below the leading entries. And so what we need to do is we need to start in the column that's furthest to the right, and we'll start clearing above. In particular, I can get rid of the one using the row operation row two minus row three becomes the new row two. And I can get rid of the minus two by using the row operation row one plus twice, row three, becomes the new row one. This leaves me with the following matrix. One and minus one are unaffected. The reason that they're unaffected is because when I'm adding this part, the row operation, there's two zeros here. So those are unaffected. I have a zero in the third position. And then in the fourth position, I'm adding twice row three. So I need to add twice, and I get minus nine. In the second row, again, the first two entries stay the same because of the zeros. And then in this next position, I have a zero. And then I need to do 3 minus minus 2, which gives me 5. Finally, the last row stays the same. We're almost in reduced row echelon form. We just have this final minus one to cancel. And to do that, we'll use the row operation row one plus row two becomes the new row one. This gives me one, zero, zero, minus nine plus five is minus four, zero, one, zero, five, and zero, zero, one, minus two. 
notice that I have exactly the same answer as before. From row 1, I have x1 is equal to minus 4. From row 2, I have that x2 is equal to 5. And finally, from row 3, I have that x3 is equal to minus 2.